so you're going to start kind of yep. backing off if you can. Yep, we'll do. You see that right there? Yeah. See that gnarly? Humpback. Yeah. So one thing I want to do is I want to be really, really careful because it has enormous fangs. And what these guys do is they, they'll tend to freak out. I'm not gripping the animal ridiculously tight because I'm not really trying to uh, make this animal feel like it's uh, going to die. So I want to keep things down. We got some good tongue flicks. Let's yeah, pull this out. Yes, who's your guest? This, if you guys want to see something funny, Urban Tarzan. Instead of letting them explain to you how great this show used to be, I'm going to show you. I actually went and bought this show on Amazon Prime just so I could check it out. And boy, am I jealous. This is this is exactly what I wish Kevin would do. I'm Urban Tarzan, wild animal relocation specialist with over 20 years experience. What, chimpanzee with a the the chimpanzee with a gun. What the hell, he's drinking, what is he drinking? He's cough drinking syrup, cough. he had a cough. cough he had a cough. I feel like this show was wasted on cable television. Just want to point out, this show is listed as unscripted. And this guy actually got bit by a monocle cobra. He got envenomated. He had the whole horrific thing in the Bronx, New York. You got to do with a medevac? The medevac, very good, and the Bronx Zoo saved my life. So he actually knows what it's like to be envenomated and then play the, oh, maybe it was a drive-by. It didn't get me, and it took hours. Hours. And it rocked his world. So he's been yep. through it all. And so I'm hoping this, we're not going to do a re repeat. No, no but he's he's confident. He deals with croc monitors. He's been yep. he's asked what, by croc monitors. He has yeah, stars yeah. all over him. So we're going to show, we're gonna show him a little bit more responsible methodology yes. to deal with something that's pretty gnarly right. like a flat nose viper. So right now I'm just putting on some iodine, essentially, so it's right there. This is good. So this antibacterial, antifungal, it's, it's really great, uh, povo iodine or something like that. When you're cleaning up a potential wound, look at this, this, hey, what the, look at, you see the I definition mean, of that? Sure. There's like a worm in there. It's. Well, we're going to find out. Yes, it is. Yeah. So I can do this procedure pretty easily without a lot of blood. Um, okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to find a place where I can nick it. So I'm going to use... All right, so let's, we're going to do a change now. I'm yep. going to give this over to him. He's going to help me. Yep. So come here, John. Yep. Over here. So, yep. so finger, dead center of the back. Oh, just watch those. Pants. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Go for one okay. sec. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Put, yep. yep. Um, and I'm not, I'm not crushing them. Here you go. Yep. Let So we get these subcutaneous worms, and what they'll do, this one's really tricky. Okay, there we go. A lot of times what happens is this animal will ingest something, something like this eating frogs and amphibians, and sometimes they'll ingest a parasite that is not meant to fulfill all of its life stages, and it will go into its host, and then it will wander around in the host, trying to um, migrate to a place where it can complete its life cycle. And sometimes you'll get these, they'll be like the subcutaneous worm. That's really, so it's, it's being encased. So I'm gonna put some pressure on it. Wow. It's a big one. Yeah, we just want to get, there we go, let it go. Yeah, sure. Okay, so ready? Yep. Yeah, it's, it's attaching itself. Oh. Holy moly. Yep. Okay, you 
just, yep. You just, so, what's happened is it is attached in multiple different places. This is just, is just one hell of a hell of a worm. So she's really trying to absorb that. Sometimes you'll see the nematode moving. They move really slow. Uh huh. That right there? Yeah. Tony, can you see that? Yep, I can. It almost looks, like a, it looks like a hair almost. Yo, the little tiny yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that could be. So this could be this big, long nematode. Um, oh, look, it just moved. Yes, it did. It just moved. Curled on the, yep. Yeah, all right. That's interesting. It's harder to hold the light with this light, but. Okay, we're good, we're good. So, right up, suture, material. Oh, yeah. I know, I know snakey. Watch your finger on that one. <laughs> yep, yep, I know. Well, you got to press down, so. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do. You're on top of your stuff. Yeah, I'll take this. There we go. You okay? Yep, I'm good. Golden. All right, so I'm going to go I'm gonna grab the worm some. Mm -hmm. So right there. And Donnie, see what I'm going to do? I'm going to cinch. I could cut it and cauterize it, but I'm going to go pretty basic. It's not, I'm not really getting freaked out by the bleeding. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I don't need to have time not. You've had a lot of luck with cinching stuff off lately, to be honest with you. Ready? That little worm pulled back in. Did it? Yeah. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna come here. You know. So the overall condition of this animal is pretty good. So when I look inside the mouth, I get very, very light pink gums, no hemorrhaging, eyes are not sunk in the head. You can check, hydrated. She's been soaking for days. Uh, so I feel pretty confident as far as her uh, health at the moment for to her to tolerate this process. So now, let's see, this is just a lot of stress for her. And there we are. Can you see it? Yep. Okay, now we're going to put her back in her cage. Oh, look oh. at it moving. You yes, see it, it moving? Yes, you see yes. that? Donnie, you see that? That is creepy. Yeah. It man. moved. It's moving again. Jesus. Oh, it's... So I would say that there's probably a bigger... See? A parasite in there. Wow, it's still alive. That's nasty. All right. It's like having a parasite as big as a hot dog in your arm. That's dude, dog. that yeah. is. Oh, my goodness. I've been hitting this with albendazole or brand name valbendazole. It's a worm. It's really good for all sorts of uh, different um, parasites, which can ultimately create health problems for king cobra, flat nose viper, schlegera, you know, eyelash vipers, or whatever. Um, if you have, actually I wouldn't say Schlegel right, because all that stuff is captive born, but if you talk about Trimoceros, Insularis, any of these uh, kind of tree vipers, bush vipers, 
um, it's we want to knock down the parasite load because the parasites at some point are going to challenge that animal. They're going to freely start migrating around the animal. Sometimes they're going to live in the lung. They'll start reproducing there. They'll start uh, uh, laying eggs in the lung for certain kinds of parasites. It causes the animal to cough those up. They can get an upper respiratory infection. And then the animal then swallow those, also contaminate its water dish. So you have all these different things. So we really want to knock down the parasite load. Besides parasites like, uh, like asteroids and uh, roundworms and flukes, and trematodes and cestodes, tapeworms and stuff. We are also interested in protozoa, amoeba. And amoeba is all part of a healthy animal's GI tract, in the, especially in the lower intestine. But sometimes that can get out of whack. We treat that with metronidazole. And depending on what species it is, if it's more like a colubrid animal that has a faster metabolism, we're using 75 milligram per kilogram. When we're starting to deal with uh, pythons and boas, 125 milligram per kilogram is given orally and depending on what we're dealing with sometimes it's given every three days or every seven days if it's given every three days i like to knock the dose down about half and then hit for once three days later three days later wait a week and then another one and uh, that basically causes a uh, anti-parasite to become very systemic and throughout the body and uh, that has a long-term effect on knocking back those protozoa. There's ways to deal with all this stuff. Um, you know, first, do you actually have parasites? And what we can do is we can do a cloacal wash. We could do a fecal where we basically uh, take feces and then we put it into a, a solution and we put it in a very strong brine solution, something that's very, very dense and it causes the eggs of the parasites to go to the top and then we put a slide on there we can then do a uh, mechanical survey of that sample to see if we have these eggs but generally i've done a lot of this stuff so i have a pretty good uh level of knowledge so i can pretty much assess these things pretty quick say goodbye say thank you i don't know Go look, chimpanzee with a gun. It's, Urban it's so, it's so in the ridiculous. house. It's so ridiculous. Don't listen to him. But anyways, you, you have to go see that and uh, say goodbye. Okay. I want to see if I can get this garter snake after everything that has been done. It's pulled out of hibernation. Well, he looks excited. All right. I'll see. No, 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 we're not. Not yet, but we're really, it, it's close. So it's it's been in hibernation, so it, it's, metabolism isn't quite there yet. Worm, you get to live, that's an annelid. I want to take a quick look at this guy. So, so I forgot to point out, we had some uh, partial paralysis on this animal due to, you know, uh, I really don't want to push this too much but she's doing really well. Um, but there was some um, limited mobility of this animal, and that's probably just due to the me mechanics of the injury and probably pain. So it's all white, Kevin. Yeah, because I've been twice a day hitting it with uh, oh, teramycin. Teramycin. So it looks good. Yeah, so so what, what's going to, the scalation's going to come back? It, yeah, it's going to regranulate. So it's going to, well, that that's the theory. Uh, regrant on my poor earthworm. Well, I think we should definitely, I want to show what it looks like when it's all healed up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, I think we're going to be in good shape with her. Uh, just allowing her to continue healing, keeping her clean, keeping her warm, getting that uh, immune response. So she went out of hibernation to being injured, so we don't have an immediate immune response. It might take days of bringing her core temperature up, where then the immune system starts coming up online, so it's not immediate. These are cold-blooded animals, and we need to understand that. Sometimes it takes days. So we might deal with a problem, put it on antibiotics, but you don't have immediate results, and it might, you know, it could be three, five days before everything is back online. So this animal, we're keeping her warm, like an ambient, like 88 degrees right now, seems to be ideal. Still born it. mangrove snake and a defrosted rat. And I've just doubled the snake over and I've tied it together with sutures and then I attached it to the rat. So if I can get my cobra to eat this, he'll continue to eat the rat. And this actually adds a really good meal.
perfect spot. Like that better. No, this is great. Let me just get my hand on this thing. I'm trying to go slow. Start kind of yep. backing off if you can. Yep, we'll do. You're doing good. Things we do to learn. All right, so we're effectively, effectively putting fangs back on. So you're gonna keep backing off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a hook. Let's see. There we go. Successful extraction. So, I'm just going to keep my Donnie safe. Thanks, Dad. How's that? Turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on! <laughs>